Welcome to Master the Game. I am Juice, and today is day 11 of RPG A Day 2021. Today's word is wilderness. So let's get started. So if you haven't yet, go down into the description, check out our link tree. You can follow us across all the social media platforms from TikTok to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. We would love to have you join us on some of those other platforms where we post other kinds of content. We do quick videos on TikTok uh, about variety of topics, almost daily, multiple videos a day. We do all sorts of stuff over on Twitter. We ask questions to the community about types of things they like in their games or maybe certain RPGs they like. Uh, Instagram, we post pictures of a variety of things, whether it's products we've reviewed or products we plan on reviewing. Uh, we also share some of the miniatures we've painted and uh, terrain we've done as well. We'd love to have you guys follow us on all those links. Now, today we're talking about wilderness. And this is an area that I feel like as a DM, I fall short a little bit. Uh, it's something I'm working on. Uh, it's something I'm always looking for tips and, you know, things like that. So if you have any tips about hand, how to handle wilderness survival, maybe exploration and travel in your games. So please share your tips in the comments below. Now, uh, I've heard people especially recently say rangers in 5e aren't that bad. You're just not running games that are tailored around the ranger. You're completely ignoring exploration and wilderness in your games and that might be true um i've found for example in dnd 5e there's a lot of things that can bypass that uh that survival uh need in a game you know whether it's the background that lets you forage for up to five characters both food and water uh, that removes even having to have rations and water in your game uh, it removes some of the you know, dangers of exploring. Uh, I'm a big fan of watching the show Alone, where they put people in the wilderness to survive on their own as long as they can and they can win money. I think that's a really cool show. And it shows you how hard it is, even for people who know what the hell they're doing and talking about, to survive on their own out in the wilderness. Now imagine having to get enough food for up to five people or shelter for five people. While certain things might be easier... Other things might be more difficult, like getting enough food, um, you know, things like that. So this is something I've, again, wanted to do a better job with in my games. And I've thought about things like, one, removing some of those automatic successes. Uh, house ruling that while, yes, you can forage for up to five or six people, food and water, you still have to make a roll. And we'll let you do it at advantage. But if you don't make it for those five people... Uh, we'll roll for how many people you that actually were able to get food and water. And the people who didn't are going to suffer a level of exhaustion. Because I think that would be a really cool way to make it feel like, oh man, this is important. We should have got rations. We should have restocked water. you know. Or again, you have to use your food and your water uh, that you have brought with you. Then. Uh, another thing that I, I feel like is a really good thing to do is to prepare good descriptions for you know, basically for every day of travel, just pick a time of the day and, you know, come up with a little description in prep of what it is going to be like traveling through the forest. Uh, is it a humid day? Is it a dry day? Use those things. Even if you're not giving them an encounter, just give a little bit of flavor uh, in your description to, again, make it feel like, oh yes, we did actually do some exploration today. Uh, maybe you uh, want to give them complications that they come across. Um, you know, like, oh yeah, in everybody give me a deck save. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you rolled your ankle, so now you're moving a little slower. And on top of that, you need to take a break uh, every so often because if you don't, you're going to now suffer a level of exhaustion, uh, you know, from trying to push through. You're also going to start losing hit points if you push through because of the pain. Uh, you also might cause further injury, uh, so you might end up lowering the max HP uh, you know, for the character while this is an issue. Like, those are some interesting ways I've heard of and I've talked about with people uh, to make things like exploration and wilderness and survival a little bit more important in your D&D 5e games, at least. Uh, I'm sure you could take some of these principles to other games as well. Uh, I know other games probably have mechanics around survival. Um, 
And again, if there's a game out there that you think does that aspect of the game really well, please tell me about that game and how it does that, because I would love to know more about it. Uh, I'm always looking for ideas to make my games better. And I think making that aspect of the game a more important part um, will make everybody's game or everyone's time at my table a lot more fun. With that, I'm going to end it there. This is a shorter one today because, again, this is something I'm still trying to work on. I don't have the best tips and advice. I don't feel like I run this up to an extremely high level. And so I want to know what you guys think about wilderness in your games. So please give me a comment below. Tell us a story about how it's been done well, uh, especially for you know campaigns like Tomb of Annihilation or you know, things like that, where you have to travel for a long time there, or even out of the abyss. How did you handle exploration and travel underground? Uh, again, would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. This was Master of the Game. I am Juice. Game on.